to work with at first. But at the end, if you guys, you know, top it off, if you guys fixed all the errors, then you're on your way to go. You know, you just made yourself a uh, kick ass silicone mask. So, you guys gotta be careful with that part. You know, like casting, like I just said. Um, you guys gotta, you know, take it slow. You know, take it slow, especially when you're taking it out of the the um, plaster mold itself. You know, you gotta take it slow. And remember, fix these um, deep grooves. You know, like I said right here, like the sharp edges, because it will truly rip your silicone mask if you got if you are if you guys aren't careful. You know, like so this stuff right here. You know that that will rip your silicone cast. You know, so you guys gotta find out a way to make it thicker. Or you guys can find a way to make it, you know, to make it reinforced. And, and like like I said, a technique that I use for Freak Show 3 is, you know, rip, rip some uh, small pieces of uh, paper towel, soak them into like a, some, uh, like a mixture of plaster, or not plaster, uh, silicone, and then, you know, put it around the stuff that you think that's going, going to rip. You know, you guys got that? So... So yeah, you just got, you guys just just gotta you know be careful with this kind of stuff. You know, think about what you're doing and think about what's gonna happen before you de before you take the cast out of the mold. So yeah, that's pretty much casting. And now what I need to do, and what you guys need to do if this happens to you, is to basically use a, um use an exacto knife or like scissors and cut off the the um what do you call it the excess um, silicone. You see, that you guys see right here, you know, like that right here, you know, cut off that, and, um, you know, fix the tears, you know, what, a technique that you guys can use is, take a stapler, or like tape or something, and put it back together, and then silicone it, you know, so make sure you guys put enough silicone to actually strengthen it, you know, oh yeah, if you guys are wondering why it's standing up like this, it's because I'm using my, um, the mannequin head that was broken, you know? So, yeah. And also, you guys gotta be careful putting the silicone cast on, on a mannequin head, you know? It will rip, you know? It, it, mine's already ripped further in when I was putting it on the mannequin head. So, yeah. So all I gotta say for you guys is, you know, make it strong. Make the silicone strong, you know? But latex, you know, you guys don't have to worry much about latex, but silicone is the hard stuff, you know? You guys gotta make it strong, you know, so it won't rip. So that's casting. Now we're ready for painting. After you guys, you know, fi after I fix the, you know, the errors I have. So, so yeah, so that's casting. Make sure you guys fix your, you know, silicone cast, and I'll see you guys in the painting st step, which is main step five. Alright, guys. Um, the uh, silicone cast right now. Is going is undergoing like a skin surgery, as I would say. So what I'm basically basically what I'm gonna do right now is um make a new batch of silicone silicone, and as you can see, I don't have enough. So I don't know how much I'll make. So what I'm gonna do is make mix a batch of uh, new silicone, pigment it to brown, like kind of like that, and dip this in to it, soak it, then. You know, just basically put it right there, so it acts like a, you know, like a supportive shield kind of thing. So yeah, it's, think of it as like a burlap, like I said before, you know, burlap and plaster. Now, I just, I was just wondering why, you know, every full, full head mask I do, silicone mask, and I've only made two so far, so and they both had the same problem. When I took them out, they always rip. And, um, like I said before, you know, there's stuff out there that will help your silicone mask, you know, have better quality. And what I mean by that is, you know, if you guys go to smoothon.com, there's like, there's actually like a, like a tin-based kind of, tin-based kind of container that contains liquid that if you mix like two drops of that into like a silicone mixture, it actually thickens it up, you know. And when that, when if it thickens it up, you know, it basically makes it so that it's not liquidy. Now, if it's not liquidy, now, there's a chance that this won't happen, you know. So, I just figured what I should do. But then again, you know, I'm not going to wait, like, a week and a half, maybe more, just to get this one thing, you know, to make this mask look better. Now, since I'm doing this tutorial video, 
you know, I have to fix it right away so I can finish it for you guys, you know. But in the future, you know, somewhere in late August maybe or early September, I will make a second copy of this and it will be a bit available for sale. Now whoever gets the second copy will obviously have the better version since, it, since it's not going to have any rips, you know, so... Like, like as I was saying, no, smooth on. Uh, I don't know if you guys can see that. Uh, I'm on smoothon.com right now, and it says right here, see this, uh, 5x silicone thinner, and uh, th this is what I need. You know, j just this is also what you guys need. So, thickening agent for smooth on silicone rubber. So what? So it's ba it just basically thickens it. You know, it's not so. If it thickens it, I think you guys are able to mold it or something, or something like that. I don't know. I've, I've never bought this item before. But, you know, I will soon, though. So, yeah, if, once I buy the item, it basically just, you know, changes everything, you know. It changes how I make silicone masks. So, once I get that, you know, I'll tell you guys what I, um, what I should, the tips that I can share with you guys. But as for now, you know, follow follow my tips on how to make a silicone two, uh, silicone mask, full head mask. You know, to pre once again to prevent this from happening, just make sure it's thick. You know, don't make it too thick. Just make it the right amount. You know, or that will happen. So, so yeah, that's basically it. You know, if you guys ever had a chance to get a hold of this um, 5x silicone thinner, then you guys are lucky. You know. That just that just that just makes her casting easier if you guys think about it. So yeah, that's basically it. And um, if this happens to you, just you know repair it using my uh, paper towel soaked in uh, silicone mixer technique. So yeah, I just wanted to share that with you guys since I just found out that thickener can you know help you so yeah make sure you guys buy thickener actually so i'll see you guys in the painting step okay guys this is um day 12 and we're on main step number five which is painting now painting is once again something that you guys have to practice on you know and um you guys aren't gonna get it the first time once again so it's kind of like sculpting and mold making so as you can see, um, I finished repairing the actual mask itself along right here. And as you can see, when you got when I added the silicone, it kind of covered up all the all the um, texture and all that stuff. But you know, I would rather have a mask that looks like this rather than a torn up mask. You know, so so now I'm going to talk about two different kinds of paints: latex and silicone. Now I want to talk about silicone or uh, latex first. Now a lot of you guys use latex. Now um, you can buy these four ounce uh, colorants, latex colorants, in uh, MonsterMakers.com, and um, you know these don't cost that much. Like one of this is like four dollars. Now what you guys need to do, what you guys need to know about latex, is that uh, see how this is kind of like light greenish kind of thing. When you guys actually put a drop on this and let that dry, it actually dries darker remember that so if you make like for instance um, blue you know once it's dry it's gonna be dark blue do you guys get that so that's the thing about latex uh, when it, when latex colorants dry it dries darker than the usual so you guys gotta remember that now um what you guys can actually do is you um, I actually got an airbrush right now that was included in my um monster makers kit but unfortunately I don't have the machine that works it so I can't use it so I can't really tell you guys anything about airbrushing because I haven't even tried it for myself yet so yeah um anyways another thing about latex colorants is that there's this thing called permawet now permawet is not paint first of all think of permawet as the crystal clear coating for spray painting.